Okay, so these are Whisper Torx head screws. I've got loads of them and I really don't need them. So if you're watching this and you live in the UK and you don't mind paying the postage, leave a comment below, tell you how to get in touch and uh, these could be on their way to you. Now some of this is the worst MDF I've ever bought, but for the purposes of putting up walls in the workshop, this has been fine. At least it's got one paintable face. The other side is terrible. Okay, so that's a little bit of a tidy up. Um, so let's have a quick look at what's been going on in the workshop. So um, behind me, you can see some wall cabinets. Uh, these are the first wall cabinets that I've put up in the shop. And really they're just to get clutter off of the work surfaces and out of boxes so that I can get to them much easier. Projects just take forever when you can't find the right tools or the thing you're looking for is in the bottom of a box. Often you add time onto a project because you find another way which is less efficient, takes longer and probably doesn't produce the, the, the same results. So uh, if I just uh, give you a view of the cupboards. So it's mainly um, uh, solvents and finishes and glues on the bottom and some filler, um, screws uh, in the middle and at the top I've just got some like bits and pieces. There's more space than I need. Um, if I take you to the top. So you can see that I've screwed the, um, the cabinets into the joists um, and there is actually no fixings into the insulated wall. Um, now I'm not going to overload these cupboards, this is very temporary and um, and eventually I'll come up with a better solution. But for now, this is this is effectively what you have. Okay, one other thing to point out is that I've now got my studio lights over the bench. And if I turn that on and let it warm up, you'll see the effect that it has. Okay, um, and that just gives me much better light over the bench when I'm filming. Uh, the bench itself is the Jobo bench that you've... Oh, hang on a sec, falling over things. Uh, the bench is the Joburg bench that you've seen me build. And this you've seen before in other videos. It's a Evolution table saw with a bench top installed. Now this isn't something which is going to remain alongside it. Uh, and it just gets brought out and put on the table for now is the uh, replacement, which is a Milwaukee uh, 18 volt um, table saw. Really quite pleased with that, with one exception. <laughs> They'll cover that in the review. Um, here's the miter saw bench that you saw me make the other week. And as some of you will have already guessed, it's just a magnet for stuff. So I'll clear that off. Um, the interesting thing about the bench that I want to point out is a question that I got asked, which is why didn't you put it close to the wall? And the reason being is that with this uh, set up to cut, I can essentially take long pieces and extend them out of the garage door. So I have a finite amount of capacity to the left and well, aside from the house opposite, an infinite amount of capacity to the right. Um, so behind me here, you can see the dumping zone for all of my Ryobi stuff. Um, this needs properly sorting out and I may well build a custom cabinet for my drills and charging station in a future video. Um, but the thing that I really want to point out is the progress that I've made at the back here. These are uh, standard 
kind of arts and craftsy crates. I didn't make these, I bought these from the shop um, for nine quid for the bigger ones. And I've got a smaller one somewhere that was, I think seven pounds. You know, you couldn't buy the material for the same money. Buying them saved me probably about two hours worth of my time to make all that I needed. And I could focus on the contents of the boxes, which are um, a cabinet for my planes, these are all the planes that I use on a sort of common basis. Um, I have a, a Stanley block plane, a Stanley number four. As you know, this is a footprint number four, um, but it's the sort of Stanley Bailey style. I've got a Stanley number four and a half. Now this has been set up for uh, as a scrub plane. Um, I have a, an Axminster three in one. Um, oh, so X, yeah, Axminster three one one, which is a three in one plane. Um, that's set up as a shoulder plane at the moment. I tend not to use the bull nose plane or the chisel plane function, uh, but I've got the bits in the box somewhere else. Um, the Stanley uh, number 71 router plane. Um, so uh, that really is um, a sort of workhorse. And then I've got a spoke shave at the top. Now it's a, a straight spoke shave. It's the one that I use the most. And then in this cabinet, really, I've got all of my Axminster chisels, um, mostly bevel edge uh, chisels right down to three millimeters, which is the smallest one that I have. Um, then I also have a Axminster corner chisel, um, some uh, sort of shorter butt chisels. Um, this is really handy for close um, hand work. The shorter blade and the shorter handle makes the chiseling much safer and in uh, the cabinet with it I've got a couple of Irwin uh, marple um, uh, carpentry chisels and I use this really for sort of the you know the sort of outdoorsy type carpentry work um, and then in the final cabinet um, there's uh, uh, some chisels for now um, but uh, out of my toolbox is going to come some other bits and pieces probably scrapers files rasps and that sort of thing um, it's kind of an alternative tool wall and I have to say I'm really impressed um, and talking about tool walls I've still got all of my wearer screwdrivers fixed to the wall over here they are going to get in the way when I um, complete my shop cabinet um, uh, project and um, and then behind me we have my TV and my um, sanding station uh, this needs a little bit of work to make it usable. I use the belt on it a lot, but the disc is hard to use because of the way in which it is angled. Um, my bandsaw, which doesn't get used in that position, it gets moved out into the middle of the workshop where I can get the dust extraction on. And uh, then for all of those of you that are asking about the CNC, here it is. It's assembled, it's been tested, it works. It uses the TV as a monitor for the laptop, um, but uh, I need to get to the point whereby the rest of the shop is kind of tidy, and uh, and that's that. So that's a little bit of a whistle-stop tour of the shop, and I hope that was interesting. Um, what I'll be doing over the next few weeks is uh, tidying up and organising some more and maybe we'll come back in a couple of weeks time to see how things are going. Um, I think I'm facing the sort of challenges that most of you will in the sense that you're probably operating from a space which is far from perfect and, um, and there's not always an intense need to improve shop storage and shop organisation and I'm in the middle of that journey and so I thought that this would be quite interesting for you guys as well. Um, and that's about it for now. Um, I'm going to record some more of me tidying up and um, we'll take it from there. But for now, cheerio.